Welcome everyone to the Ghost Rock and Western HO Scale Model Railroad. Indoors. This is my new railroad. Uh, if you've been to my channel before, you've seen the other 4x16 HO layout that I built. Uh, I kind of threw it together. The track was awful. The board was warped. <laughs> I just kind of got excited and built it quick. But that's okay. It's gone. I... Uh, Kept all the, the details, people and buildings and trees and uh, bushes and plants and ground cover and everything, but the best I could. And uh, chucked the rest, and now I've built new bench work and new track. I'm using Atlas Code 100, Fletch Track, all the way. And I've learned a lot by watching other videos on YouTube uh, on how to do this, but I basically learned a lot by myself, simply by practicing. Anyway, let's start off with this. I cut the curved board separately on a, you know, using a jigsaw, measured it out, and uh, I'm using wooden scenics foam. Look at that stuff, it's nice. Foam road bed. Uh, I find it much more superior to the cork. Cork is old school and it's it's really, you know, it's hard to work with, no way. Um, plus it's inexpensive, really inexpensive. All in all, I figured out this railroad is gonna cost about a buck 72 per foot and that's with track and road bed. So that's not bad really. Now I'm really a G-scaler. Um, you know, as you've seen in the past, and my G-Scale stuff, there we go, let me see if I can zoom in on the uh, LGB Black Widow F7s and the LGB Sumter Valley. I'm uh, really a G-Scaler, been a G-Scaler for 25 years, <laughs> nearly 25 years I think. But, uh, and I still run G-Scale, uh, however HO is challenging. Uh, I, you know, it's, it's less expensive and uh, durable. I can, uh, you know, weather the cars and uh, if something breaks, I can always repair it a little bit easier. And uh, I can run four trains all at once on this particular layout. I've got an elevated part and a ground level part. There are no inclines. I don't want to deal with it because inclines I want to run long trains and inclines are, are a problem I don't really want to do that plus in real life uh, trains run in straight lines they really do uh, however I do have some interesting parts not only do I have some nice wide curves this is a uh, 29 and a half inch curve and a 26 curve right here I got a 22 inch curve here and a 19 inch curve. That's a little steep, but better than an 18 inch curve. Uh, over here is the interesting part. The train goes under the tunnel there, uh, or over under, you know, under the other uh, roadbed, and then it curves into the station area, and then it goes out again toward the mountains uh, and other landscape area. But as you can see here also, I wanted to share this. I'm using some older Atlas track re-railers here because I'm not going to be switching and I'm not going to be backing trains up and using realistic operations. I don't like that. I like to run the trains and watch them, listen to them, and take pictures of them and share it with everybody. I just like to run trains. I run them often. I don't want to do any kind of uh, fancy schmancy. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, you know, the re-railers will, I'll use to put the trains on the track. And uh, you know, this one here's got some paint on it, but I'll, I'll, I'm gonna be painting all the track. And before I get the layout up or any kind of um, landscaping and such, uh, I think I'm gonna be painting the roadbed and the track but I can use a regular spray can to paint this stuff. I don't have to use an airbrush and I don't have to use any kind of special paint or anything. I could just, you know, get some myself some, you know, rusty brown oxide 
Uh, it could be latex spray or oil based, it doesn't matter. It won't harm the, the track ties. And I'll just get a light coat on all these. And that way the train, the track will look more realistic. It won't be that shiny black. And as far as top of the rails are concerned, I'll just clean them. Clean the top of the rails real well and that way the train will have good conductivity. I use this saw often. <laughs> this is my workbench part over here across the other side of the room. And another workbench over here. Some of the rolling stock, I'm sorry, engines and rolling stock in the back. I just kind of threw up these shelves to keep everything out of the way and display them nicely. Uh, well, let's continue on this here. Now, I, I don't want to spend a whole lot of money like everybody. I mean, everyone wants a deal, no matter what their income is, they do want a deal. So what I've done, is I kind of looked around the house to find things that I already had to build this railroad. So I had these one by sixes, a bunch of them, from the old, uh, I was displaying some G-scale trains in here, and I used the one by six shelving to do that. So I took those down, of course, and I'm gonna use them because they're sturdy and they're level, and I'm gonna use them to, you know, uh, keep this track on as I run the elevated part of the railroad. So I had about, gosh, I had about nine or 10 of these things, so I ha I'll have enough to do the whole railroad, including here, it's gonna run on the back as well, on this back wall, elevated four inches above. And as you can see, I've got Woodland Scenics Roadbed coming in here. This open and space part will be a bridge area and the train runs in straight lines, like I mentioned earlier. Trains run in straight lines, so that is how I'm gonna do it. That open area there is a bridge area as well. There's the other curved part that I got leaning against the wall because I'm gluing these two by twos to hold up the curved area. I glue them down first. And what you see there is a tiny little quarter inch shim to elevate the track only slightly because you know I had to give it a little lift because these things are like these things are thicker <laughs> this is a little thicker than the board I used to cut the curb on so <laughs> you know I had to kind of shim it here's a shim that I put here to hold that curve part up so when I butt this up against there, it will be flush. So everything's solid. A good idea is, I, I think what I'm gonna do is paint all these concrete gray and they'll simulate bridge abutments or pillars, you know, not abutments, but uh, uh, pillars. Uh, I might even, I don't know, paint them brick red and maybe uh, scribe in, uh, you know, used brick. But this part here, is still open in order for me to get you know to the track here uh, if i had a, if i had this wood going over the top of it i wouldn't be able to work inside so thank goodness i thought ahead on that regular elmer's glue works fine i don't have to use any kind of gorilla glue or space age stuff it works fine little little dabble do you and uh some of the tools i'm using here i'll show you this Track cutter, it's a nipper. Had to have that, learned that on YouTube. It's a beautiful tool, man. It cuts the track real nice. And then, of course, you've got to use a file, a little jeweler's file, to um, file the track down, you know, at the edges to file it flat and, and get all the burrs off. Uh, needle nose pliers to push joiners on. Nail punch to, because I nail my track down. I'll show you. Yeah. I nail my track down because it's much better than using the glue that, I saw people spreading glue down and putting that and then sticking pins in there. What a hassle. Mm -mm. Nope, nope, nope. I nailed the uh, track down and I was careful not to bend the ties, although I did 
a couple, a little bit, but I kind of bend them up a little to retrieve the level <laughs> look of the tie. I only did it to a couple of them. I was very, very careful. Uh, so anyway, um, I don't want to make this video too long, but that's it for now. I'm using Henry, I'm sorry, I'm using uh, heavy duty liquid nails to for glue under here. Just a very thin coat, very thin. It, and it takes a couple of days to dry, see it's very forgiving. But once you press it down there, it really sticks. And then overnight, it's done, you know, it's, it's up. So that's a good thing to use. I'm making a lot of progress. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. There will be a lot of changes. There'll be a lot of landscaping. Um, for instance, this area here where the tunnel, you know, where the train goes through the underneath the overhead. I'm just going to have a big mountain. I have a big mountain there with a tunnel portal here. You know, big tunnel portal and then a, a giant mountain. You know, one that's yeah, it'll be it'll be nice. And then in the corner out there be a nice mountain real tall right out there. And then of course this you know one would be mountains and oh gosh, there'll be farms, city, town, desert, lakes, rivers, all kinds of stuff. Uh, imagination will go far. Oh, let me, oh, I also want to share with you the bench work. What I did was, is I got ideas to build bench work in uh, modular pieces. So each piece you see here, like that piece there is a, like a, like a two foot, it's, it's 16 inches wide by uh, four feet long. And then we got another one, 16 inches wide by four feet, 16 inches wide by four feet, 16 inches wide by four, and it went all the way down. That way I'm able to move them around, make them level, fit it right. The legs are two by twos and uh, they fit right. Sometimes I shimmed them up, but a lot of times I used some L brackets to bracket it to my wood floor in my shed and that firms it up. So as you can see, you know, it firms it up good. There's no wiggling, there's no shimmering or, you know. So <clears throat> I may end up painting those, but there's, there's a million things to do. Well, folks, um, I could go on, but that's about it for now. I'm gonna make another video maybe in about a week. So thank you for joining me and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was entertaining. Hit the like button. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really care, but anyway, you can share this video if you want. Oh, believe it or not, that's my phone ringing. I got an Andy Griffith theme as a, as a uh, tone. So, all right, folks, bye-bye from the Ghost Rocket Western Railroad.